All right. Um, before we begin this week, of course, we're going to take a look at where we are along the course of our journey and our primary points of consideration for today, as you can see highlighted there in yellow. We're going to uh, take a big picture look at evangelism and context. And um, context is king. That's kind of the heading that we're going to be talking about as relates to evangelism in a hybrid world. Context is king. We're going to take a look at what that means and how it functions for us. And then uh, resource identification. Resource identification. I hope you can recognize and see the flow and the order of the information that we're uh, sharing together and uh, can see hopefully how it makes sense, at least the way I was kind of framing this workshop in my mind, and hopefully you can see that it uh, it does make sense, the, the order that we're going in. So that's our, our task for tonight. Uh, but before we explore uh, these various evangelism contexts, I want to make sure, of course, that we check in with you and want to know um, how it went last week. How, how was the work for the week? Um, Feel free to share um, if you are able to do so from your time spent last week. Last week, I asked you to work on three things. First, we were to review. There were two to three modes of communication and note that uh, any concerns or questions that you had about them, the modes of communication. Then I shared the article. Um, there's five digital evangelism methods that you should use in 2021. Um, I would love to hear your feedback on that if you had time to read it. Love to hear your thoughts, um, and we can talk a little bit about that as well. And then if we were to continue praying uh, about and praying for people we want to reach. Um, and I, let me say too that I found it kind of funny. I was going back over um, uh, in preparation for this week, and the same gentleman who published the article, "The Five Digital Evangelism Methods for 2021." Uh, published a new one for 2022 that I only saw this week, so I, I wish I had that last week. So instead of five, there were six that he had, and uh, we're going to touch on those a bit in our, our workshop today. Um, just thought I would mention that if you just Google it after our time today, Google six digital evangelism methods, you'll uh, hopefully see the same um, uh, website in the same kind of format that you saw in the information that I shared last week. So that's it. Um, how did it go for you? Anybody want to share um, what was what was your last week like? And you can pick any one of the work for the week uh, assignments that we had. Any feedback, any questions, comments, feel free to let me know. Um, the You had to exercise the um, where you had family, employees, friends, church and community. Mm -hmm. um, how you see yourself what what I when I was doing the exercise there were three things that came to mind about myself but those same three things came with all of those areas they were the same for all of the areas they, they didn't change okay you want to share what what um to yeah help? say for instance family Mm -hmm. I said, uh, dependable, accountable, and responsible. Mm -hmm. And how I communicated that was by simply doing what I said I would do when I said I would do it. And, and the same thing when I was employed, I mean, when I was working, um, I was very dependable, accountable, and responsible. And I found that I'm the same way with all these categories. Mm -hmm. So um, what I said was I found that all five categories were the same for me, which I based on my true character, which is embedded in me. It's, it's something that I just don't, it's, it's something that I just don't do. It's, it's just a part of me, those things. But I just found it to be the same for all. So I don't know mm -hmm. uh, what your thought might be on that. Well, I, I think, well, let me just say first that, that there's no uh, right or wrong um, response to that. I think you, what you um, observed in your responses um, is very plausible, um, given, as you say, you take a look at yourself um, and 
um, obviously you're consistent across the different categories of the different aspects that we asked you to take a look at last week. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's fine. I think, you know, as long as you are aware that as you go from one person to the next or one environment to the next, um, at least based on, you know, how you view it at this point, um, you have a tendency to operate in the same way. And so I don't make any judgment on that, whether it's right or wrong, good or bad. It, mm -hmm. it is what it is, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's helpful to know that because then I think you're able to, um, you're able to note where your, your strength is in consistency, but also I think you're also able to note where there might be an opportunity for you to, um, to not change who you are or change how you, you know, approach different situations, but to note that there may be an alternative available to you that you may not have tapped into. Um, not that, not that you need to change, but maybe the approach that you take might vary depending on the situation that you find yourself in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so and that's, that's really a lot of what we're going to be talking about um, today with respect to environment and context and how context should in some instances be the shaping and determining factor uh, as it relates to um, our communications with people. Um, but, you know, as I think we said in the first week, something similar to this, at least, um, we know we talked about the message shouldn't change. Um, I don't know that the messenger necessarily should change as much as the messenger needs to be aware of how they can adapt or be flexible. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Again, so that exercise from last week was, um, as I mentioned, a way for us to tap into uh, a lot of what I think goes missing when it comes to evangelism, and that is taking stock of where we are, right? That's, a, that's important to, too, just as it is important to know where the other person is. And so um, we're going to do some of that other person work today, but I think you got to start kind of where you are. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the the uh, feedback from that. I can, I can add. I like to add that. Um, in each category, I see myself as if it's as whatever role it is. It's family, grandparent, father, um, uh, uncle. As far as our relationship with my family, the cousins, what their first cousins, and communication would be through face to face texting, in whatever settings we're in at that particular time. Uh, family gatherings and whatnot, and whatever. An employee, I'm, I'm retired, wouldn't have gone 11 years. So, as a manager, I would be in that particular role, engaging in my employees as a manager, supervising and communicating through email and whatever action had to be taken. And friendship would be whatever friends I have in church with with, with the camaraderie with my church members, the community, whatever's going on in the community. So whatever role it is, I would take whatever category, the communication would vary as far as each particular category. So that's how I look at that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> great, great. Right, thanks for that. I uh, appreciate your comments there as well. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, and, and same thing, you know, different environments perhaps will call for different um, ways to show up in those environments. Absolutely right. I think that's fine. Anyone else uh, would like to share? If not, then we'll move on. Let me do before we go. Uh, also, say good evening to those of you who are just uh, jumping in with us uh, that I did not uh, have a chance to say hello to before. All right. Um, context. Evangelism and context. May I have a volunteer, please? There's a scripture that you should see on the bottom left of your screen. Can I have someone read that for us, please? Hi, 
have come, I have, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers of it with them. First Corinthians with you. First Corinthians 9 22 B through 23. All right. Thank you. Um, real quick, can someone else talk about talk about that? What what does that mean to you? What what does that do for you? Anything at all? What's it mean? Yeah, just you know, you. But what, do you, what did you hear? How, how does that set your mind? What, how would you respond to what you've just heard and, and seen there uh, as it pertains to evangelism and, and context? Mm -hmm. Well, as far as becoming an evangelist for the Lord, you were going to emulate him as being all things as far as bringing people to the scripture and to the gospel. He's all things, all men, and he can save as many as he can through the word. And you two are to support him through the gospel and uh, get the word to, to uh, people, to the gospel. That's mm -hmm. what it means. Thank you. <clears throat> the, the Apostle Paul um, in that section of, of the text, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, in that section of the text, um, what we see there is him developing a personal philosophy regarding his approach to evangelism. Now, of course, you won't find those words, what I just said in the Bible. It's not a, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hear anybody say of, of Paul in there that he was saying, uh, well, this is, this is what I aim to do and how I construct my way of being. But by talking to the Corinthian church as he is here, what we can note is that he knew what his approach was, what it was by experience and maybe even in the moment in Corinth. He knew what his approach was for, that, for spreading the gospel and that his approach was shaped by the environment in which he found himself. I have become all things to all men. Well, how do you become all things to all men if you, if you never flex or demonstrate adaptability uh, or pliability from one situation to the next, right? So his approach to, shape, to spreading the gospel was shaped by the environment in which he found himself. He was purposeful. I want you to make note of these things. He was purposeful, right? Notice that his purpose was to do what? So that he could be a partaker of the gospel. That was his, it was, he was purposeful. He had a clear goal. What was his goal? It was to spread the gospel. And he understood that people are not monolithic. In other words, people are unique from one to the next. People are unique and they respond in unique ways. Again, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. So again, he is purposeful. He has a clear goal. He understands that people are not monolithic. But, and he always kept his focus. And the focus was to share the good news. This is a um, personal philosophy that Paul shares with the church at Corinth as it pertains to his approach for his missionary work. And his missionary work is aimed at spreading the gospel. So we can say that this is the personal uh, philosophy for evangelism. And this is Paul's. Now, this may not be yours, may not be mine, but this, this, this is a good model or uh, an example of a philosophy, I think, that works um, because of one's understanding of their experience. In order to do this, in order to have this type of philosophy with a defined focus, um, understanding context is critical. And that's why we're stopping today to take a look at evangelism in a hybrid world, 
um, as it pertains to context. Um, so according to Merriam-Webster uh, dictionary, context has two primary definitions. You see it on the screen there, hopefully. Um, so if someone could help us out, please read there um, the two primary definitions that you see on the screen. You want that read, Pastor? Yes, please. Okay. Number one, the words that are used with a certain word or phrase that help to explain its meaning. And I'm speaking of context. Mm -hmm. Two, the situation in which something happens, the group of conditions that exist where, where and when something happens. And then subtitle A, the interrelated conditions in which something exists or occurs. Thank you, um, Deacon Murphy. Again, so these are two primary definitions of the word context. Now, when you think about these definitions, maybe it's easy then for us to understand why it has been said for such a long time that context is king. Has anyone heard that? You all familiar with that phrase? Context is king. All right, so can anyone tell me what you think it means to say, to hear, to see this phrase, context is king? What does that mean to you? Based on what we've just seen and the, the way context is defined. I'll take a stab at it. Go for it. I, I think it means that uh, in our reading of uh, a particular scripture, uh, we may read it and interpret it to mean one thing uh, as we are seeing it read. And, but that might not be the context because we would need to either go back before that uh, particular set of scriptures to see what was occurring uh, that led up to the scripture that, that um that we were reading, and that would give us more of what the uh, setting of the place, uh, who, who was affected or is being referred to, or what principle uh, was building up to the particular point in which we started reading to give clarification of what that set of scriptures really mean. Uh, we could read it read the scriptures uh, either before the one that we started out with or scriptures that follow to help us really uh, get an understanding of uh, what the particular real point of those scriptures were and not just the words that, that we read. Right, absolutely. And I, I appreciate how you used uh, the Bible as a text, um, as text to help us appreciate what context is. Um, because that's ultimately where I'm going to, I was going to touch on that. Um, and so I mean, I need to say a whole lot more, but other than to say this about the Bible in, in context, to understand the Bible and, and what, what it means is to do more than just pick up 1 Corinthians 9, 22 and 23, and then build your whole understanding of the letter of 1 of Corinthians on those two verses. Right, that would be irresponsible <laughs> to say that you have studied the book of Corinthians based on those two verses. And that's not even a whole two verses, that's one and part of another one, right? So you can't really say that you know 1 Corinthians or even 1 Corinthians chapter nine because you've read one and a half verses in that chapter, That right? That doesn't make sense. So you wouldn't dare do that, you wouldn't say that. It's the same way with how we show up in different environments, you wouldn't dare say that even if you are familiar with a relative's house, let's say you, you, you know, the house you grew up in, you know, you know the sights, the smells, you can walk around in the dark with no lights on and not stub your toe or any, because you, you know, you grew up there, you know that place, it's, it's familiar to you. But you probably can't go back there today and, and 
suggest that you know, you know, its intricacies now. That was too long ago. Different people have moved around in that place, if it still even exists, right? Furniture has moved. The paint on the wall has probably changed colors. The smells out of the oven are different. It's just different. Um, the weather has probably beat on the house to now where you could hear that drip on the windowsill. You know, it's not really a drip anymore. <laughs> you got an open flood there, right? There's different, different things are happening to that house. It's the same way with all of the environments that we approach, uh, that we enter. And this is why context matters. It's, it's necessary to know the context if we are to have um, success, if we wanna call it success in our evangelism, um, especially so when you start talking about evangelism in a hybrid world. When you start talking about evangelism in a hybrid world, we know, and I don't have to tell you that, and you, stuff has changed. Can we just say that <laughs> stuff has changed, right? Um, things that are today, are just different than they were. And we don't have to look any further than our closest relationships with people. You know, whether we're talking about a, mar uh, a married couple, um, we're talking about neighbors, we're talking about people that work in cubicle next to each other. And we just heard from brother Robert, he's retired. So obviously that workplace has changed since he left because he's not there, right? Um, my marriage has changed in the last year and a half because we spent more time together in the last year and a half than we ever have in the previous 15 years right um and we you know we become closer together because you know we got to be allies even more like with these kids you know <laughs> so we this change our relationship has changed in the last year and a half i hope you understand what i'm saying it's context 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 so in a hybrid world evangelism it requires an appreciation for the various contexts in which we may evangelize. Understanding context will position us to evangelize well because we are better able to know the questions of who, why, how, how long, how often, and even what. So these questions that we ask um, um, all the time about certain things, we should also be asking them about evangelism. All right, so see so if I can say this as um, simply as I can. The environment shapes the context. The environment shapes the context. In fact, the environment is the context. And context should determine how we operate. Um, there are certain things that we need to account for. Location, people, time or timing and other factors that we you can see on the screen here. Um, all of these are important to consider when it comes to evangelism in a general sense. These are extremely important. So how we process these contextual inputs becomes even more important when it comes to the nature and the norms of what it means to be hybrid. As we talked about um, in the first week, hybrid being a combination of two or more elements that serve to function uh, in some certain or same direction. So the more elements are added to a given situation, the more um, characteristics of a person to consider, um, the more experiences that you've had, all of these continue to build and add up and they inform context. So let's take a few minutes here. Um, and talk about evangelism and context. So looking at the screen, um, you see there the context considerations. There's a list there, we've got people, purpose or purposes, time or timing, duration, content, and method. Love to hear from you on this. What stands out to you here? Or are there some other um, considerations of context that you would like to see added to the list and that we should all be paying attention to. So we've got people, purpose, time, duration, content, and method. 
and then I've had I've got some kind of points to um, help to identify what we're talking about with each of those. But what else? What should anything else be added? What are you thinking about what's here? Um, Pastor, I I add I added um I, well you said environment or the venue, but um I say as it relates to the time is it really depends on the person and situation. And I think you mentioned situation and circumstances that's going on at at that time. Mm -hmm. And but Although you, you want to um, evangelize and you're talking about what your um, time permitted with this person, the person allows you, um, the time is really de determined by that person. But however, how much time are you willing to put in it in working with that person? I, I would add that part. How much time yes. are you willing to put in it? That's a great observation. So there's two parts to that. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. And then you also mentioned, um, this, um, I would say location, right? The, the, the place where you are that has obviously a whole lot to do with context. So absolutely. Yep. Thank you for adding those. If you're taking notes, you might want to jot those down um, on, your, on your slide. Are there any others that you might you might add or something you have a question about or want to push back on that you see here? Uh, I I would recommend um, prayer. Time there, there's time shown here, but I would say even more specifically, time spent in prayer. And good. Uh, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. That is that is uh, the means by which uh, we would be prepared uh, spiritually prepared uh, ahead of uh, these other things, the, the people that we might come in contact with. Mm -hmm. uh, if I've spent time in prayer, mm -hmm. there may be uh, something that that uh, God will show me during that prayer period that hasn't even happened yet uh, until I come into contact with a person, uh, then the purpose will be explained and uh, the contents of of that would be revealed. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, if I would uh, add that to the slide, just to, and so in my mind, if we categorize things, um, and I would just add to that, I would say here, preparation, and then yeah. kind of define preparation by using prayer, um, and maybe even, you know, research of, of the location, the environment, uh, asking mm -hmm. questions of people who have been to the place, uh, as an example. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and, and because you, you mentioned prayer, it's also helpful to note, as Veltina mentioned, um, at least in Veltina's case, she mentioned the time or timing being a function of the person that we're going to be meeting with, right? how much they allow. Prayer is also um, instructive because not only is the individual, um, uh, you know, obviously important, the, the word I'm looking for is escaping me, but um, is, is, is the primary concern here, right? Between the two of you is the individual, is the other person, right? But that doesn't mean that we come into the situation um, empty handed, right? We come adding to that situation. And the very minute we get into the situation, the context has changed again, because now we're in it. And we bring with us our ourselves and our stuff. And we bring with yeah. it our preparation. We bring with it our prayer that helps to inform, as you mentioned, even things like content. So that's good. Good. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd like to add, um, you have uh, would be armed with scriptures that you can speak to, to um, as the spirit leads you, piggybacking on what um, 
Deacon Murphy said, because um, you want to have, uh, when you're talking to somebody, you want to have the scripture with you and the spirit of the Lord and, and guiding you how you're going to approach and, and as far as um, something to lead them with. Also the prayer. And also maybe some correspondence to some tracks, something you can hand them. Because timing is everything as far as sp sporadically meeting people or as far as how much time they have, you have to talk or communicate. But anyway, um, that's all I have to add. Thank you. Yep. So even more uh, on the way of preparation and content with right. respect to scripture. I um, appreciate that. Um, thank you for adding that in there, uh, Brother Robert. Any other thoughts before we move on? If not, or so, um, you know, just give me an opportunity to uh, um, give you the floor. Before we flip over, let me just point out here the idea of content. And um, I want to be clear when I say which aspect of the gospel that you all know what I'm talking about. And we've talked about this a couple of times. Um, uh, I know certainly in the first, for the first week, um, I talked about holistic approach or holistic view of the gospel, right? In the gospel, we understand properly as the good news that comes to a people in a certain time. Even the gospel is context uh, focused. To rightly understand the gospel is to understand the context into which the gospel is to be preached and proclaimed. Jesus comes into the world at a specific time. And in that specific time, there were a certain particular group of people. And they were facing a specific, certain historical reality. So their context and the way that they would uh, understand Jesus may be different than the way we understand Jesus. Why, you might ask? Because our contexts are different. Right? Um, if, and you all have to help me, you, you all who wear glasses, if your prescription is different than mine and we switch glasses, won't we see things differently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you might not see <laughs> my glasses. <laughs> I'm, uh, you're right. I might not. <laughs> you're right. That's right. Yeah. It's the same. Just, just now look at that through the lens of time over <laughs> 2,000 plus years, right? This, and, and now tell me that you can see things 2,000 years ago and, and see it clearly without appreciating who was there, what they were doing, how they would understand Jesus coming, and then vice versa. There's no way that they could 2,000 years come into the future and know how to do that, like log on to the computer. Not if you just drop them in today. They, no, it takes time to appreciate what that what that would be. And that's what I'm trying to understand here about context. We have to appreciate what context means, especially because in today's uh, way of li life and living, things not only have changed, but they are continuing to change. And we appreciate what that means for the people and the places um, that we are in, and also what it means to the message that we intend to proclaim. So let's brainstorm a little bit. Put you to work a little bit here. Here we're developing a strategy for evangelism success. I understand the context of your evangelism. So let's begin. Um, here's what I want you to do. We'll do this. Do this one together, and then um, you can just you know print out this page and duplicate it any number of times for all the people that you are that you have been praying for. Um, as we began the first. So let's start first with the person or the people on your evangelism prayer list. And what you're going to do there is put their name on that top line where it says name on evangelism prayer list. Let's go ahead and write them in there. And then we'll, we'll kind of walk through this together. All right. So you, you have your name there. If you don't know a name, just, or if you have not, you've been praying about it, or if you, the spirit has not put a name on your heart, the last person you talked to before 
you logged in here tonight. We'll just use that. Person. All right. OK, so you have their name on the line. Next, based on what you know, sense, or believe about that person, what are one to two specific goals that you want to set with your next communication with them or even your communication over time with them? Um, that's purpose and or reason. Remember I said with Paul, he had a philosophy and one of those was defined by a specific goal or purpose that he had in mind. So what are one or two specific goals that you wanna set something to consider here, um, in addition to just setting the goal is, how will you determine what success looks like as you measure against that goal, all right? If you're unclear about that, maybe another question is, why do you believe this individual is on your evangelism prayer list, all right? If you've been praying about it and the spirit gave that person to you, why, why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? So again, this, this um, role here is your purpose as it pertains to the evangelism philosophy. And the purpose comes from what you know about them, not what you know about you. What do you know about them? One other thing to note about purpose is, is that the purpose should align with the mission that you are hoping to achieve. Does that make sense? It should be alignment between the purpose and the overall mission. Right. So that's just the first row. You have one or two specific goals for that one person. All right, questions, comments there, okay, move on. All right, in the next row, time or timing, the question is, when will you start? Or if you've already started, when did you start? That can be a specific date. It can be um, you know, a season, if you don't recall the date. A particular season of life or even a season in a calendar year when when or when when did or when will you start okay now as it relates to time or timing and the date that you intend to start context so here's some questions to consider about context are there any important dates that you need to be aware of for that person as an example is their birthday somewhere near there? Did they just have one if you started already? Is it coming up soon? If they're married, is there an anniversary coming up or did it just pass? Um, if they are engaged, when is the wedding, right? What are the important dates? Holidays, what, what do they celebrate? How do they feel about these holidays? Do they, in fact, do they celebrate holidays? And especially the holidays that are nearest to the time where you will begin to engage that person. Um, memorial dates. So dates of the death of a loved one. These are very important to people, right? Call them, um, what do we call them? Heavenly, heavenly birthdays, right? Do you know when those dates are for their mother, their father, a uh, brother or sister, a loved one, right? Someone who's close to them. And then as you're thinking about those dates, um, how can these help you to achieve your purpose? How can your awareness of these dates help you to achieve your purpose? I wanted to suggest that there is some correlation, or maybe there should be rather, some correlation between these important dates and the purpose that you have um, written down particularly as it relates to evangelism. Can anybody, um, let me just take a break there. Can anybody, um, can anybody share if you, if you kind of know what I'm aiming at there? What do you think I mean by that? Why, why should there be some correlation 
between the dates being important and the purpose. Anybody have an idea? Um, you say the correlation. What, where is that you were reading? No, I'm not. I'm just asking the question. So I, what I'm saying is that that there may be some correlation. There may be a tie between mm -hmm. the timing or the time that you're going to begin or, or you already started. There may be a correlation between that and the purpose that you have indicated on this uh, on this form. They may be around. There the may be. Part. Right. So if that's the case, then what what do you think? could be a possible correlation? Why or how could these be correlated? Uh, depending <laughs> how soon or, or, or how, depending on the timing of, of uh, which is, will determine uh, the need for urgency to focus towards um, meeting this particular mission. Uh, it could be a date that's coming up soon in which we would be praying to uh, prepare ourselves to address uh, the purpose and the timing, or it could be something that's uh, three or four months down the line, which would give us time to prepare for that, um, that particular time period. Yep, good. That's that, that's that's one way to look at it. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, if there's a time period that's a little further down the horizon, right, that gives you some time to do some extra praying and extra research and extra. And, and when I say research, what I part of part of what I mean is uh, having other types of conversations with the person. Yeah, yeah right? like coordinate. You need to coordinate. Okay, right. Intel gathering. Yeah, but the um <coughs> the date the date uh as far as the anniversary you mentioned where do have a date you that 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 helps you with um achieving your goals and your plans when you have more time to plan and, and to set your goals to to get a, a positive result. Mm -hmm. That's what that does. Yep, it does, it does. Um and let me suggest too, and of course, you know, we don't want to play on anybody's emotions or anything like that. Um mm -hmm. but that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, you want to say more about that? Well, I was thinking that if my purpose was related to um, trying to have more marital harmony for the person that I'm concerned about, if we are approaching an anniversary, it might be more emotional for us to have this kind of discussion and be working toward the purpose of more happiness and unity in their family and so timing there would be i think especially important absolutely thank you for uh thank you for clearing uh well not clear that's not what i wanted to say thank you for offering that that is uh stated uh much more concisely than i was going to state it so thank you <laughs> that's good um, that's good yes. sure um uh name on evangelist prayer list. Uh, these these names are people that are unsaved or people that have um maybe uh stepped back from the church. Be I'm asking this question because um some of which we're talking about, if it's an unsaved person, if we, we haven't um, we haven't met the person to be able to um, ascertain these questions. But I am full agreement with what um, uh, Deacon Murphy had said when he was um, adding on to um, the timing and different things that. Um, we're very prayerful that the Lord has already done the work and he will be leading us and guiding us to who we would approach. These are people that are unknown to us, but he's done the work in them. He's already touched them. We want them to put us in the path of these people 
is that is is that the same as what you're talking about here? That's that's my question. I I, I just because okay. as of right now, um, this part of it I, I hadn't done because mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking about uh, people that are unchurched or mm -hmm. um, people that don't know the Lord. Right. So there are um, I think a couple of ways to approach um, a response to your question in terms of who are these people, right? Um, one, it could be someone who is uh, unchurched and unsaved, right? That, that could very well be the case. Now, let's just take that one, unchurched, unsaved. Even there, there's two ways to look at that. One is, do you know that person? The other one is, is it a complete stranger to you, somebody you don't know right now, okay? So as it relates to this exercise, for now, we're talking about the unchurched or unsaved person that you know, okay? Um, and so the other part to your question was, it could be someone who has stepped away from the church and maybe evangelism is necessary for them again, right? I say to that, amen, and then, Again, two ways to look at that. Do you know them or do you not know them? And again, for the point of this exercise, we are assuming that you know the individual in order to be able to complete um, at least some of you know, what we are looking uh, to complete here. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. I just want to, you know, as, as we're being instructed and guiding and not, and not so much on our own understanding, but getting the... Um, proper tuning on it, mm -hmm. you know, I recognize um, my default in this process. So I just want to be clear mm -hmm. why I ask, you know, certain questions. I just want to be, you know, on point. Sure. sure. You know, what is going on? Yep. I think, I think you got it. I think you've got it. So we talk about uh, time and timing. The, ne the third row there is duration. Um, still somewhat related to time or timing, but still a little different. Over what period of time will you commit to being with, learning about, sharing with uh, this person? Again, when I say this person, I mean the one on that top line. How long will you commit to being with that person? Maybe you can answer it now, maybe you can't, you don't know, and just can fill it in generally. You know, wanna be with them as long as I can or until they can profess Jesus as savior or until they tell them, tell me to leave them alone, right? <laughs> uh, whatever it takes, right? Short-term, long-term. Yeah. If it's somebody that you know, is it, and let's say that it's a holiday coming up um, and you're only going to be in town for X number of days or they're going to be here for X number of days, then maybe that's the duration for you, possibly. That's just an example. So again, um, another thing to kind of add in as we consider context. On the next line, for content, uh, we might take our lead from the information listed as purpose or reason. So knowing why will help to determine what, okay? If you know your why, you may be able to determine your what, what you are going to say, how you are going to um, put forth the information or disseminate the information or to make contact, to share this content, right? Um, it maybe it's a personal development issue, and this content can be proposed in different ways. Personal development, maybe it's a connection that you have with that person by way of a hobby. Uh, maybe you're part of a club or association, and there's some uh, some meetings or some uh, common things that you all do, activities, events that you're going to be at. They'll be there too, and your conversation can begin there. That's content. Maybe it's a health concern or health matter that you strike up a conversation with someone and then you kind of, that conversation can lead you toward the evangelism, uh, end of life discussions or something else. Um, no matter what is on, on this line for content, we should be thinking about leading to the gospel. So while the content might be different for everyone as it pertains to how we develop the content. 
there's a certain aspect of the content that should be the same for us all. That's the message, right? And I say that knowing that the message um, is going to be uh, shared in a different way because we're all different, right? But it should be there. So content, how do you get into the conversation? What sorts of um, tie-ins or commonalities do you share? How can you strike up conversation, keep it going, and then kind of lead into the gospel? Or is it really just I'm headfirst into the gospel message? And that could be your content. Okay. Then the last row, this here is methods. Here, you're going to write the best ways to share the content as it relates to your purpose. The best ways to share the content with the person on your list. And that's important. Don't forget we're talking about context. The content that you want to share, what's the best approach? What's the best method of getting that information to them? Okay. So here... I am not talking about what your preferred method of communication is. Okay, we need to know what is the best method for them. So you may not know that right now, but I want you to just make a little notation. How do they best receive information? And then the information that we want to share, that we want to have a conversation with them, or that we kind of want to share whatever uh, information with them, um, how would they best receive it? Okay, this can be situational. Um, <clears throat> and if you have any confusion about that, if you're not sure, what do you think you ought to do? What, what should you do if you're not sure about how they might best receive information? Uh, you could ask them. How about that? You can ask them. Right. You can ask them. And even in that asking, you can be very direct and say, hey, listen, um, I am concerned about your soul. And I, of course, you don't say this like I'm saying, right? <laughs> Dress it up a little bit. I'm just saying this for the sake of time. I'm concerned about your soul. I want to share Jesus with you. How can I, how can we do that? Right? Don't, you get the point, right? Ask, mm -hmm. ask them, I'll ask them information you want to share, or, you know, I'd like to talk to you about, you know, such and such, or, hey, do you have time to talk about this hobby that we both have in common? Love to talk to you, get your, your thoughts. All right. When, how can we do that? Mm -hmm. um, Pastor, I have, I have a question. I yes. came to this, this, this uh, discussion uh, thinking that um, the, the outreach would be to, um, individuals who were not known uh, mm -hmm. to me. But as I have listened uh, to you and, and the other participants um, and having to identify the name of the, uh, the person, um, I'm wondering, is it appropriate to consider a loved one and the duration would be forever? Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, does it, does it have to be in a certain time frame? Uh, I mean, should we focus this in, in a certain way that we identify when the outcome should occur and when we should have completed this task? I love it. Thank you for asking that. Um, so this is, well, for this form, this form here, yes, I think is probably better tailored to the people that we know or are familiar with. Okay. So I think this form, yes. Overall, though, um, and we're going to, I think, kind of take a turn um, on the next, uh, on the next slide. And then definitely next week, we'll take a de definitive turn where we're going to be talking more about now, how do we connect with people that we don't know? Okay. OK, um, but now let me let me just offer this, that with this form, I think if we can um, work through this with one individual that we know and then maybe another one, it's kind of like working out where you kind of work out your muscles and your muscles get used to a certain repetition. And maybe spiritually speaking, our evangelism muscles can get used to a certain repetition of understanding context by doing this with people that we know. So that when we um, 
are in a situation where we can share the gospel with someone we don't know, we have these in mind to fall back on, right? We can remember, okay, I've got a definitive, I've got a focus, I've got a goal in mind. This is kind of the way I think I would love to approach the situation or the person. Um, and then, you know, what do I say? How do I say it? How do they best receive it? Um, and so I think, again, just building up the muscle, muscle memory is what it's called, right? It'll help you to, to be more adept at or adroit at it when, when it comes time with someone we don't know. Okay, thank you. No, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on, on this? I, I'd like to ask something, Pastor. Sure. Now, I want to drop back to the duration mm -hmm. uh, because uh, as I'm attending these sessions, I'm learning more. But at the same time, you have to look back at maybe previous attempts to evangelize to uh, maybe even a family member. And I, I would have to say that it's not always successful, but it may not be successful at that time when uh, I am the instrument in which I'm used to uh, reach out to that particular individual and um, maybe you really don't see the results right away that you were expecting um, through, you know, the conversations that you're having with that individual. Uh, so I say that to say that sometimes the duration is until the Holy Spirit says that's enough. <laughs> and um, I tie that to uh, the scripture where it says some plant, some water, but mm -hmm. it's the increase. Yep. So I, I believe my purpose was served at that time to plant and, mm -hmm. and the Lord may use someone else to come along yep. um, to say what I have said, but maybe in a different way where that individual is more receptive. And then, um, then uh, I have uh, I don't feel that I was unsuccessful in it uh, because I realized that that um, God is moving other pieces in place as well. So I'll just stop there. Mm -hmm. and, right. I, and to that, I'll say yeah. amen. Right, right, right. So we can we can um, just be reminded that um, what we define as success, we need to be careful that we don't miss how. God, by the leading of the spirit, is identifying as success. Because as you mentioned, maybe our, our job was to share the gospel, plant a seed, and then that was it. Right. And then maybe our job was to come behind somebody who's already planted a seed and then water that seed, right. nurture the ground, right? Exactly. Make sure the weeds don't grow up around the seed, right? right. And then maybe that was our job. But even still, the, the one who uh, souls and waters and nurtures, they, they still may not see the end result, but were they faithful with what they did? That's the question, All right? So I think how we define success has a lot to do with, as you mentioned, and I, you mentioned it rightly, duration. Um, what are we supposed to do when we have opportunity to do it? In our way of thinking and the prayers that we've been praying and the sensing that we have with the spirit, what, yeah, how, should this be a long-term engagement or not? Right. Mm -hmm. I think I think you got it right. I think you got it right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, hopefully, this provides a kind of a clear picture here of what we're going to be doing. We need to we need to move on. Um, so, if um, you do have any questions, please make use of the chat box uh, and and type that in there. I'll be sure to clear those um, the questions before we leave uh, for tonight. OK, so let's see how we're going to make this come to life. Uh, here we talk about resource identification. Let me ask you real quick, real quick, based on this exercise that we just completed. What are the some of the available resources that can help you? Can you name a few? Just throw them out. You don't need to wait for my my permission. Just go ahead and just shout them out. What what resources can you use uh, or that are at your disposal in order to make this happen for you? Uh, I 
I would text. Text, good. Do you know, Pastor, when, when I saw that resource identification, I had something else in mind for resource um, identification. But I, I read everything that, um, I, I, I don't know, I was just thinking something different, but I understand what you were saying. And when I saw that resource identification, before I saw the list that you had provided, I was mm -hmm. thinking that um, through our evangelism and we um, spoke with someone and in so talking with them, they disclosed um, that they were having an issue. Uh, uh, it could be food stamps or health insurance, something. My mind went to, um, uh, we should be able to have, you know, if, if we evangelize and the person had a need, they have a need, um, how are we addressing that need? I, 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 for a minute, I thought that that's where that was going, but I understand now. But I'm asking too, you know, and so we would need to be able to tell them, oh, well, you know, give them a resource of someplace where they could go to assist I see what you're them. saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that, that's okay. That's okay. Um, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Let me just, since you've mentioned the list, let me just go to the list. <laughs> you see here on the left side of the page, um, there's some scriptures there that should, uh, I think, help us to note that, um, you know, God is, uh, God is ahead of us in this idea of <laughs> knowing that we're going to need some help <laughs> with this right yes it's not it's not news to god <laughs> just, so this is you send them out two by two right silver and gold i do not have but i'll give you what i do have what did what did peter have in the name of jesus right these are resources the gospel right so resources that i have a list here that um can be useful obviously to people that we are aware of because most of this works because we're connected to people right but um, maybe you've seen this work already in your own life that you don't have to be connected to people to connect with people. And if you understand what I'm saying, <laughs> so, you know, how many fr Facebook friends have you made that you didn't know before you got on Facebook? It was a friend of a friend or a relative of a friend. And, uh, you know, you establish a connection based on some mutual relationship, right? Could be a complete stranger. Um, People have numbers, scores in the millions and whatnot of friends and followers, the people that they don't even know and the people that don't even know them, but they follow them, right? These are yes. ways to connect with people, ways to connect with people. And I don't have on here things like direct messaging, which is a part of Facebook um, and I think on Instagram as well. There are other um, social media app apps um, that are out there. These are some of the more popular ones. Um, we're going to talk more about these in depth next week um, as we talk about, you know, how to kind of bring things together here. Um, next week, we're really going to dive into, I think, a couple of the bigger items, or not the bigger, the more popular um, resources to help us determine by way of, we're going to do some exercises that will help us um, figure out how to connect with people that we both know and don't know, and then what we're sharing when we do connect. Okay. And these are just a quick list. Um, you know, what do we mean here by evangelism? How do you evangelize with, on Zoom? Well, you can have a family meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, often you, I hope, hopefully you've taken some time to connect with your family. You see them, in, in, not face to face, but you're seeing their face, right, <laughs> on Zoom. Um, game night can become an evangelism um, opportunity, not just for friends and family, but friends of friends. You know, you can invite people to invite people. All right. Again, just the list, hopefully just kind of, you know, whet your appetite a little bit. Um, here's some tips. Here's some tips. 
All right. Um, so along with those resources that were on the last slide, it's always helpful to remind ourselves how we can be engaging um, with the resources that we identify. How do we engage with these resources? It'll be relational, be nurturing, be considerate, be a contributor. Don't just be a taker, but contribute something. Be willing to learn and be brief. I should have said concise instead of brief, but yeah, hopefully you understand the point. Don't take time that is not granted to you to take. That's the quickest way to uh, get the conversation to end is when you go too long. These make sense? Any questions, comments here? Um, All right. As I mentioned, next week, as a part of the conversation on relaying the message, that's what we're going to talk about next week, relaying the message. Uh, we'll demonstrate using a couple of the uh, more popular resources um, that are also some of the easiest to use in the setting that we have here. So uh, we definitely won't get to them all, but we'll try to cover the ones that are probably going to be the more um, employed by us. But to now and next week, of course, we do have some work to do. You all, I believe, most of you, if you don't have it already, you should go online and get it. The slides, this is the last slide week uh, for today. Work for the week. Two options. And you fit in one of these two, <laughs> no matter who you are. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to take a look at these. All right. Some of you have already made contact with the person or persons that you've been praying for. All right. Some of you have not. And it's okay. No matter which group you are in, you have here your work for the week. So up until now, I've been just asking you, just be in prayer, be in prayer, pray for. If you started already, at, wonderful. God bless you. I pray that it goes well. If you've not started, then this is the week where we're all going to kind of start putting things in motion. All right. Note that um, next week, we're going to ask you to lead the discussion. So I'm asking that you will really do the work. So the first half of our time next week, it'll be kind of you all sharing where you are. Then the last half, we'll talk about relaying the message using some of those resources that we just pointed to. Okay, so do the work, do the work, do the work, show up next week. Let's see what, uh, how the Lord has blessed our time and effort together. All right. So there's two different assignments, one for those who've already started uh, making contact and another one for those who have not made contact. All right. Are there any questions, any questions, how we feel about this?